I'm really into biology, I'm really into reproduction. It fascinates me, like, genetic progress and, and even gene editing and how to make something better. So how do you make that steak on a plate better? Well, it's mostly a genetic correlation to making a better steak. Now, we've met our fair share of spur-clad, boot-wearing, horse-mounted cowboys over the years, and most of the time our conversations don't get into things like gene editing and genetic progress. But it wasn't very long after arriving at Josh Eiler's ranch in East Austin that we realized we were meeting a different kind of cowboy. I've been on the big ranches out in West Texas, South Texas, and you know, where they've got the, the, the traditional cowboy, yep. the, the, the Hollywood cowboy in yep. a way. Yeah, absolutely. You don't look like him. No, no, not at you're, all. You're, you're what I would call a modern day cowboy. You're the, the guy that's really out there, you know, and they'll yeah. do it, but you're, you're, yeah. you're right here off of a, a major toll road. Yeah, you can, you can see skyscrapers, you know, eight yeah, miles from downtown. That, you know, we have Tesla one mile away over there. Of downtown Austin, eight miles over here. Um, absolutely, and I, I think the best way to like make people understand it is the agriculture is kind of funneling down an ending pot, and yet the population's growing, and the world needs to be fed. So I may not be you know, the Hollywood cowboy and what everyone expects, but I promise I'm doing my part, and I'm. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that we all get to continue to have this way of life in the future. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I think I'm gonna park mine right up front. Fighting for our way of life is something Josh knows all too well. Before he took to the cattle field, he was on the battlefield. I was really young, I was a teenage boy, I was 17 years old. Blows my mind still to this day. I was a leader of a special operations team in the United States military. I've always been one of those people that, if you're gonna do something, do it to the best of your ability. And so, I, I had heard that there, the United States Army was the best army in the world, so I was like, oh, that's cool, I wanna be part of that. And then I had heard that, oh, there's these guys that are kinda of like secretive and they're called Rangers and you can go do that. And I was like, all right, that sounds good. And that eventually turned into, you know, three combat deployments to Iraq and then one to Afghanistan. And when I was deployed, I, f I felt more like an Olympic athlete than I did a soldier because I had such an immense amount of pride wearing that American flag on my shoulder and going on those missions and, and actually believing what we were doing was right and I still get goosebumps thinking about it right now yeah by the age of 20 Josh became the leader of his own team of US Army Rangers but a major injury during his deployment in Afghanistan sent him home and searching for what to do next. That's when he got beef on the brain, and not just any beef, but a high quality, full blood Wagyu. Let's be honest, most people can raise cows. But oh, can you? No. Yeah, most people can. Like, yeah, I, like I could teach you to raise a cow, and uh, you'd probably yeah. raise a decent cow, right? But probably. can you raise the best cow? Can you set? I'd probably name her and keep her as a pet. Exa so. Exactly, right? You can't do that. Number one rule: not no names are allowed, right? Uh, but can you do it in such a, a manner that you set the world record for the highest price bull ever sold? You know, like we did, you know, and, and that's literally because you just apply modern science to it. I'm excited. Josh loves nothing more than sharing his military story and the innovative methods behind his business, Ranger Cattle. And there is no better way to see and taste his work than at his unique dinner tours. So this is our tasting room here, where um, about two or three nights a week, we'll, uh, we'll have our chef, Chef Drew, come in, and, and it's like a tasting room for wine, except for beef. So we'll take you on a whole tour, but instead of like learning about the grapes, you're learning about the cows. 
So we like to really bring you in. Like if it's a, if there are strangers at that table or strangers that get on our bus for the tours, well, we don't want you to be a stranger at the end of the night. And, and we're very good at making that because the, the one thing that is, is kind of like a tell as old as time is if you want to get close to somebody, break bread with them. How much yeah. of what you're doing has to do with what you just brought up? You're feeding the world. Yeah. What? How much of it has to do with that? It, that's all it's about, right? So when I was in the military, I took an incredible amount of pride when I would go onto a military base and it said, you know, 1st Ranger Battalion. That was the coolest thing in the world to me. Well, now that same feeling is on the products that we create. You know, when we produce a steak, it takes us three years to produce that steak. So the nicest thing you could ever say to me was, wow, that was the best steak I've ever had in my life. That will literally bring me to tears because I know how many people put how much work into it over how much time. On any given evening at Josh's Ranch, you can find a crowd gathered around a pit of windblown flame-kissed firewood, bellies full of some of the best beef by a long shot. But for Josh, this represents more than just an opportunity for fellowship. It's a chance to proudly continue serving his community. Probably over half the tours that we give out here to kids and let's be honest, how many of those kids will get into agriculture? Maybe 1%. But if you get low, they, then they're not scared of you. If I give 100 kids a tour, that means one kid will get into agriculture. And if they like agriculture, they'll have a career in agriculture. And a career in agriculture in the next generation, when we're long and gone, could be massive in this world. So I could get the one kid out of a hundred that came out and toured us into agriculture and that kid could be the one that changed the world. That's pretty cool. That brings a tear to my eye, you know, and I probably shouldn't pass that up. So that was a very long-winded response to say that I think it's just an extension of my service to my community. Like, that's all this really is, right? Like, I went and I fought the war because we were attacked and I, 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 it felt like the right thing to do. And I still feel like what I do on a daily basis is the right thing to do. You left Iraq and Afghanistan, but you're still on a mission. Absolutely, and I still take an immense amount of pride in doing what I do daily. Yeah. Look, so these are the mamas. Did you lose any buddies? I, I did. Um, one of my good buddies, so we wear these bracelets. So this one says uh, Sandrino Platino. He's the first Italian I ever met. Um, however, yeah, he, uh, he got killed. He was in my Ranger platoon. We got to the Ranger about the same time. And um, it, it was a devastating loss to the community, right? Um, however, we wear these bracelets because that's our way to remember him, you know, and to know that he loved this country and that at any given point, he was willing to sacrifice everything for any one of his brothers. Uh, like the, these guys, they, they joined the military, they fought the war, and they sacrificed so much so that we could be happy, and we can never take that for advantage. You know, like sometimes we disguise it as, as, as calling it freedom, but freedom is happiness. Freedom just sounds hardcore. It sounds tough, right? So you're like, yeah, I'm a freedom fighter. No, you're a happiness fighter, dude. Like, you, you want people to be happy. You want, you want them to be able to do what they want when they want and, like, say what they want. And... Happiness, like, biting into a really good Wagyu steak. There you go. Yeah, yeah, everything ties back into beef, right? So, yeah, absolutely. It's not enough to call Josh Eilers a cowboy. He's a happiness fighter with a new mission to keep us Texans fed with some pretty darn good beef and to continue to share the stories of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. I, I think that 
you know, talking talking about the military is a good thing. Talking about your loss is a good thing. I want to talk about it because I think that's how you share those stories. And you don't, yeah, there's some bad stories, but there's a whole lot of good stories, you know? Like Sandrino and Casaburger, like them living on this earth is a net positive. So yeah, I'm, it sucks that they died. I know, I, like I was, like I, I, I carried them both, you know? I, I folded both of their flags and watched watch their families just collapse it when it happened. However, their time on this earth was a net positive and we're very, very lucky that they lived because they made this place better. So yeah, mm. just like Wagyu beef makes this place better. Yeah. Thanks for hopping in and traveling with us. Now click the subscribe button for more videos like the one you just saw.